We saw that uh, in a super lattice system and we are talking about Ni 3 Al which is also called a Li 2 structure. So, over there it looks like FCC, but it is not FCC, it is a Li 2 structure that Ni has a separate position, aluminum has a separate position. And now because of that if we take a system uh, where 1 1 1 plane is the glide plane and A by 2 1 1 0 is the lattice vector, uh, then we saw that it leads to what is called as chemical stacking fault. So, the species of opposite kind are together which is not desired and it is also called and it creates what is called as anti phase boundary. So, we have checked that for 1 1 1, but uh, now we need to also check it for the other plane that is possible in an L 1 2 structure which is 1 0 0 plane. Okay, so, this will also confirm whether A 1 1 0 that we found to be a translation vector on 1 1 1 can be used as a full translation vector for 1 0 0 plane. And if it satisfies the both of these then most likely that is what is the translation vector and hence the verger vector of a full dislocation for this kind of system. So, let us uh, draw the 1 1 uh, 1 0 0 system. So, here let me draw 1 0 0 and it would seem it is very simple because at the corners we and again I will have to draw 4 cells so at the corners this is aluminum atom And at the face center, what is it? At the face center, we know we have nickel. So, this is nickel. So, this is the 1 0 0 plane, and once the, the here the Berger vector is in this direction, so this is your A by 2. from here to here is the A by 2 1 1 0. So, now this is the shift that will take place if this is there is a extra half plane on this 1 0 0. So, everything on this plane will shift with respect to the bottom plane by this much amount. So, we also need to draw the bottom plane and what do we have on the bottom plane in the plane just next to it. Okay. So, now we will again need to go back over here to this drawing. So, this is your 1 0 0 and the next layer of plane is just this one where there are only nickel atoms at the face center which in this projection will look like as if they are in the center of this particular edges. So, they are in this different layer. So, I will draw it like this. So, the dot inside the circle represents that they are in a different plane. but they are all aluminum atoms. So, this is aluminum sorry nickel atoms, the orange one is the aluminum atom. So, now what happens when we shift the top plane by 1 1 0. So, again here what do we see if you shift the whole thing by 1 1 0 this orange atom comes to this center where it is right now red. So, the nearest neighbor for this which is right now for this red atom this is the nearest atom this is also sorry the next nearest atom not the nearest nearest is this one. So, the nearest atom remains the same, but the next nearest for the next nearest which is in the next level and is equal to root 2 a. So, this root 2 a distance atom which is the next nearest for this red atom changes instead of 
the red instead of the red atom which is the nickel being the second nearest nearest neighbor to itself you get aluminum being the second nearest nearest neighbor to nickel so next nearest neighbor remember that term next nearest neighbor changes it is also called as n n n so first thing is when you when i say that the next nearest ch neighbor changes one is that this a by 2 1 1 0 is again now confirm that it is not a lattice translation vector so now you can clearly see that very different from fcc in fcc we saw that a by 2 1 1 0 is the lattice translation vector second thing that it implies is that the gamma apb for 1 0 0 is less than gamma apb for 1 1 1 why is it because the nearest neighbor stacking fault or anti phase boundary will have a higher energy which is what we found in 1 1 1 on the other hand in 1 0 0 what we get is the next nearest neighbor anti phase boundary so this will have a lower energy so this is another thing and this will become very important again when we talk about something that we saw earlier the anomalous behavior now let us talk about what will happen if I use instead of a by 2 1 1 0 if I take a 1 1 0 so what happens now here orange atom is shift, shifted all the way to the orange atom red atom is shifted to the red atom so everything is brought back to its original position meaning no one will be able to figure out if any changes have taken place and therefore we can say another thing that we can conclude from this is that a110 is a lattice translation vector shortest in fact shortest lattice translation vector we have not proved it we have just seen by example that this is the shortest lattice translation vector which is the Berger vector for full dislocation now remember the one I am again going to introduce another term this full dislocation is called super dislocation because compared to FCC this is twice the Berger vector and therefore it is as if you are talking about two dislocations put together and simultaneously if a by 2 1 1 0 type and I am going to say not partial dislocation but super partials are formed then it leads to formation of APB. anti phase boundary so what we see is that there is a possibility that a by 2 1 1 0 type of structure you would see and when would you see that when you have a super part super dislocation dissociating so let's say this is a 1 1 0 which is usually represented like two dislocation so this is a super dislocation so these are just uh, terminologies somewhere some at some places that you will see but there is not much uh, you should not get confused with that it is also a dislocation and the dis partials are not the same partials as you see in FCC therefore there is a different name given to it as super partials so this can break into 1 by 2 1 1 0 which is super partial so this is now represented as and there will be another 1 1 0 
which can be represented like this. And in between these two, what would we have? We will have anti-phase boundary. So, whether you are talking about 111 or you are talking about 100, you will have of anti-phase boundary. Of course, the energy would be different anti-phase boundary when you are forming on 111 and when you are forming on 100. And just to remind you which one would be lower? So, we saw that 100 has the next nearest neighbor via anti-phase boundary while 111 has nearest neighbor anti-phase boundary. So, 100 is the lower of these two. So, it seems that we have figured out everything about super, dis, uh, super lattices and their dislocation but we have not yet been able to see any particular reason why they should show higher strength other than that the Berger vector is high, higher in size. That is because things become more interesting here. So, there is another uh, interesting phenomena that can take place and which we have not yet discussed like remember in FCC and I am recalling FCC just because whenever you have on 111, 1 by 2, 110 dissociates into and I will say A by 2 dissociates into A by 6, 211 plus uh, stacking fault plus A by 6, 1 to 1. This is I am just recalling. Okay. So, whenever you have on 111 a dislocation like this, we know that something like this can happen. So, can this also happen on sup, uh, super lattices and the answer is yes and that makes it very, very interesting. What we have now is in the FCC in the super lattices, A by 2, 110 and here I have missed A. So, let me write to, for the sake of completion. So, in, in here we have A by 2 translating sim something similar, but instead of a stacking fault, we already all have a, a anti-phase boundary over here, remember. So, this is anti-phase boundary added with stacking fault and it is called ISF, intrinsic stacking fault. So, ISF is so now here you had if you go back to this reaction, we saw that it had two such dislocations which we call super partials, and those super partials can dissociate into yet another lower level of partials which is this like this one. So, you will have a inter stacking fault inter, uh, intrinsic stacking fault over here and then uh, intrinsic stacking fault over here and two partials and in between that we will have something anti phase boundary. Now, whenever you have a combination of ISF plus anti phase boundary, we term it as complex stacking fault. Okay, so, we have so many terms now intrinsic stacking fault, APB, CSF. So, now let us quickly let me define not in the not just the nomenclature, but what is the implication of all these three. So, let me write it over here. What do you have when you have a ISF occupying so, stacking fault, it is simple stacking fault we, had, we have been calling, occupying an unconventional or unoccupied site. So, this is a site about site. In normal stacking sequence. what is anti phase boundary occupying a normal stacking site so 
So, here it is not about the site, the, the stacking site you are that the atom is there is, is an expected or is a normal stacking site, but not the chemi right chemical site, but not the correct chemical site. So, this is a difference here chemical atoms are not the not of concern here only the positions or the incorrect sites have been taken. So, the stacking has been changed. In the APB the stacking there should have been an atom over there, but only instead of A B is there or instead of B A is there. So, that is APB and when both the things can happen that is what you have called what is called as complex stacking fault a combination. So, that should make you clear about the terminologies that we are using. So, in summary what can happen on 111 for a super uh, lattice and remember it is about 111. super lattice can dissociate like this. And here let me A 1 1 0 A by 2. So, first level of dissociation would be like this which will lead to anti phase boundary plus a by 2 1 1 0 and usually it is represented like a super dislocation dissociating into smaller level dislocation. Now, further this a 1 1 0 it has this a by 2 1 1 0 can further break down into a by 6 2 1 1 type where in between this you have the chemical stacking fault plus the step plus the anti phase boundary. So, leading to chemi uh, complex stacking fault plus a by a by 6 1 to 1. This is for this much part. Okay. So, we can represent like this as a, this is the real partial and then there is a APB and then this will break down. So, this can again is shown as A by 6 2 1 1 plus C S F plus A by 6 1 2 1. So, this can be shown like this, this can be shown like this. So, in all that is what all can happen just in symbols if I had to write it will be Now, this really looks a complicated thing and now it can even give rise to some complicated phenomena. What are those? Okay, even before that there is something that I missed let me write it down. So, you have two different types of fault chemical stacking fault and uh, APB. So, what is the usual size of this chemical stacking fault is usually of the order of 1.5 nanometer while anti phase boundary is of the order of 15 nanometer. And yeah, one more thing well, is it uh, energetically stable? So, let us also compare energy. So, on the left hand side this is A square, on the right hand side this, uh, this is A square by 6, this is A square by 6. So, A square by 6 into 4. So, this comes out to 2 by 3 A square. This is certainly smaller. And hence energetically favorable. So, energetically yes it is possible it is not just theoretical energetically also it is possible. And if you were to see this how would it look like uh, just like we have drawn earlier 
the super partial dislocations there will this is how it would look like you will have CSF here you will have APV here you have another CSF it can have a different width it need not be of the same because once they are separated they are two different species they are two different entities this will be a by 6 2 1 1 so writing the same thing just in a different form so that you can appreciate the true picture now if you remember in FCC we said that partial dislocations always travel in pair why because the width cannot exceed beyond a certain value here also we have looked at there are there is a width r1 r2 and there is a total width r now this width this width widths cannot be exceeded it means that the super dislocations even after splitting must travel in pair must glide in pair not travel must glide in pair now you have so many of these dislocations partial four partial dislocations moving together and that is something that will always have to be there what will that mean that there will always be a higher stress required for these dislocations to move and this also would mean that if there is any barrier all the four the partial dislocations will face that barrier and therefore uh, back stress would be much higher so all in all we can say that this will lead to strengthening behavior implies strengthening of ordered it can be in the form of precipitates or phase so this clearly explains to us that why the strength of uh, intermetallics like this which are ordered intermetallics they should be higher but that is still not the complete picture we earlier also asked the question about the anomalous behavior the anomalous yield behavior where we where we saw that strength increases with temperature and then decreases with temperature so that is still something that needs to be explained okay so that can be explained in now these words this is what is called as gear Wilsdorf locks. Okay, so there is something called as Kier Wilsdorf lock, and this is formed in systems which have these type of super partials and then super partials splitting further into regular partials. Now in L12 structure 100 as well as 111 are glide planes, right? You remember that. But the partials, which is A by 6 211 type, these are formed only on formed and glide only on 111 not on 100 so if somehow part of these one uh, these dislocations were on 111 and other part was on another 111 and in between it was stuck by a 100 then they will remain as it is let me explain what i am trying to say so let's say this is one of the 111 planes and this is a 100 plane so this is a 100 
this is a 1 1 1 plane. Now, let us say here you have the partials, these are our partials in between this you have CSF and this is connected like this over here to another set of partials CSF and here you have the APB. Now, these partials as I said earlier can only glide on 1 1 1, it cannot glide on 1 0 0. So, it cannot come over here, this cannot go over here and you would say why not this APB, this will bring them down together, uh, it will or why will it at all go to a, uh, 1 0 0. Well, there is a reason for that too. You remember gamma APB 1 0 0 is lower than gamma APB 1 1 1. What it means that this antiphase boundary would like to remain on the 1 0 0. So, wherever it finds an opportunity when this has not split into partials, this will move on to the 1 0 0 and suddenly it goes moves back on to the 1 1 1 and it has split. So, this part is now locked, this part is now locked. So, it cannot come back together and at the same time it will not allow any dislocation to move on this plane and this plane. So, what is happening? There are so many things happening at the same time the dislocation set I would say not pair becomes sessile or immobile. Not only that it also does not allow other dislocations to move on these planes. So, this is what is called as lock. Now, this has formed a lock, neither it can move itself, it is pinned, nor it will allow other dislocations to move. So, it has, it is a lock unless you put a key, what is that key? That you constrict the two partials and then allow them to move back onto the 1 0 0 onto back onto one of the 1 1 1. But that is not going to happen because this APB prefers to lie on 1 0 0. It is very unlikely that it will like to go on the 1 1 1. It will like to stretch itself on 1 0 0. It is like you are want to sleep. So, it is sleeping on 1 0 0 and it does not want to you can say walking on 1 1 1. So, this is the more desired position for that. Now, what so this uh, explains another thing that these intermetallics can have very high strength, but something must be happening with temperature that strength is increasing. So, next question is effect of temperature with increasing temperature more cross slips take place. And since they are mobile they dissociate into partials. So, it means more and more locks are getting formed with increasing temperature. So, the effect of temperature is that more and more locks are getting formed. And what is the implication of more and more locks? That strength is increasing. And this is what we termed as yield stress anomaly. So, with temperature this is increasing or leading to higher strength, but then this should happen keep happening at higher and higher and higher temperature, why does it break down at some point. So, at some critical temperature 
something must be happening what is that that is happening the most important thing that happens at any particular critical temperature you remember order to disorder transformation. Meaning now it is no more acting like a L 1 2 structure it is only acting like a FCC structure and in FCC we know that something like this does not happen there is no Kier Wilstorf lock. Meaning acts more like FCC and hence locks not applicable anymore. And this is not the only thing that is happening with increasing temperature, pearl stress. also decreases and hence with lower stress uh, or with the stress requirement for movement of dislocation reduces further and further. So, overall this leads to drop in strength with further with further increase in temperature. So, now you can imagine we will have. So, it is increasing and this is that critical temperature beyond this it starts to drop and this critical temperature is in the range of 800 to 1000 Kelvin for a system like uh, Ni 3 El. And to summer to uh, close this session uh, or to this close this module on super alloys let us uh, realize that L 1 2 is not the only system there are some other systems where you can get this kind of complex dissociation of dislocations. So, let me just write down a some brief summary. So, L 1 2 is not the only system. What are the other systems? For example, B 2 it forms now B 2 is relatively simple it is it forms only uh, anti phase boundary and the Berger vector here is A by 2 1 1 1. L 1 2 we have seen it can form this plus C S F plus this plus uh, A P B plus this plus C S F plus this and the Berger vector here the smallest Berger vector is 1 1 2. Then there is another system D 0 3 which forms this plus A P B plus another super partial plus A P B prime. Okay. So, this is let me come, type, come back to that in a moment and then so there are two types of A P B that I have listed here and there is a reason there is A P B for nearest neighbor and A P B. So, in the same set you are able to get two different types of anti phase boundary one with nearest neighbor the other with next nearest neighbor neighbor next nearest neighbor and the Berger vector here is 1 1 a naught by 4 1 1 1. So, this is one thing and just to show that in a super alloy like nick super alloy nickel based system what you have is not just N i 3 A L it will be too uh, brittle. So, here you have two phases one of them is always the more you can say softer phase. So, let us say this is the N i 3 A L phase which is ordered and 
all these and usually they have a structured system and this is something like a disordered NIAL. This will be softer and if there is a dislocation moving, so this dislocation would move like this, but it will bow out and if the distance between the two is H, then we know that the stress required to form is this or 2 alpha g b by h. So, smaller h implies higher strength. So, the higher higher would be your fraction of an i 3 l, higher would be the stress required or smaller are the particles, you will have a smaller inter uh, particle spacing and therefore, h will reduce and you will lead to higher strength and then again the temperature effect will come and so on. So, that is all about the super lattices and next time we will talk about interaction of dislocation with other entities. Thank you.